Kaguya-sama Love is War is the most popular romantic comedy in contemporary anime. The story is an eloquent and enjoyable tale that balances hilarious sketches with nuanced character writing that cuts deep into what the characters are, without trying to undo the bounds of what it means to be a romantic comedy. The premise of two geniuses fighting to make the other confess because they don't want to submit to the other by being honest with their feelings sounds silly on its face, but the story is aware of that and it has fun with it. The one who falls in love loses. This is the crux of the series and it is this simple belief that drives an immense amount of plot progression and character growth for the cast. The cast is comprised of seemingly well put together individuals, an illusion that fades quickly after their introductions. Every gag and every exchange is about upping the ante, getting the upper hand and winning in the battlefield of romance. It's obviously a really shallow way to depict love, but the story knows that. It subverts its own premise to foster character development without diminishing the romantic comedy genre by belittling or looking down on its audience. The ways in which each character is ignorant makes sense. They're not just funny plot points, but a window to see how inexperience can create funny moments or misunderstandings for them to grow and reflect upon. At the end of it all, you're left thinking that, even if love is simple, every single person, regardless of their heritage or history, leads a deeply complex life where they must change and grow through their experiences. My favorite character in the story is Ishigami Yu, who spends a large part of the story developing from a very sheltered and introverted rich kid to the absolute goat which many fans regard as their favorite character. I won't cover every single arc, but I'll cover two that stick with me to this day. Ishigami Yu is an expert at processing and analyzing data, placing his skill set somewhere in the realm of accounting, auditing, and general computer skills. These talents were the reason that President Shiragani recruited him to the student council before he completed his first year of studies at the academy. His role in the story is the deuteragonist, who has similar problems to President Shiragane, but navigates them differently. The difference between the two of them is the facade they uphold. Ishigami is not obsessed with an image of prestige or silencing his critics. He resigns himself to the isolation he exists in because of how his experiences have shaped him. While Shiragane has a reputation for being a hardworking student that stands alongside the elite, Ishigami is referred to as human trash and hated by all the first year girls, including his own classmates. One of Ishigami's gags is that he really hates normies, the people with fulfilling social lives, popularity, and girlfriends. While it's mostly played for laughs at first, it speaks to his insecurity about the kind of life he doesn't believe he can have. He accepts his place in the world as a have-not surrounded by those that have it all. His other bit is that he's extremely self-deprecating because he's aware that people, especially girls, avoid him, fueling his apathy towards actively trying to change that early on. Simply put, his insecurities manifest into an inferiority complex which fuel his self-deprecating humor and derisive attitudes towards normies. Some people may feel tempted to reduce him down to a character that's just meant to pander to lonely otaku, but a lot of sincere thought went into writing his character. If people feel comfort in a character that explores their struggles, I honestly don't find that very pathetic or sad, nor does the narrative which goes out of its way to convey its ideas without being condescending to the audience. Ishigami is a socially isolated boy who's the victim of gossip and bullying, and the narrative invites you to think about him beyond the surface of what you see at first, so that you can appreciate who and what he is. Things are rarely ever that simple to summarize, so let's look at how the idea of simplification hides the deeper narrative and character writing in the story. Shuchin Academy exists in a simplified version of the world. The narrative doesn't strive for a realistic setting to explore its ideas, instead it shoots for realistic character expression and self-reflection. The world and its premise are deceptively simple to hide the complexity buried beneath appearances, which the author leverages to tell ideas without the prose being very preachy or sanctimonious in a very unearned and unsatisfying way. Ishigami is a person who is simply a creepy weirdo to a lot of people, and they're not all too interested in being proven wrong on that front. Lately, in the world you and I live in, there's a tendency online to film random people doing inane tasks like shopping or walking around because they are NPCs who are seemingly not real people. This is in contrast to our belief that we are important because of things like our experiences, our thoughts, and how we understand the world that we live in. Some people may call this concept protagonist syndrome, where you delude yourself into a level of worldly importance that only makes sense if nothing threatens the lie you tell yourself. I predict that someone will say that it's just a meme and it's not that deep, but it does have a deeper psychological effect on us as people. When we oversimplify and minimize the complexity of others, only then can we have a TikTok trend to film people without their consent and not call it out as weird stalker behavior. We've clearly brushed aside the humanity of people we're watching and filming, 
But that's not a person with a family, lived memories, pets, hobbies, and a unique and complex existence. It's someone who reminds me of an NPC walking around in GTA 4. It's difficult to appreciate how complex anyone's life is, which makes it really easy to completely misread how things you say or do will affect other people in the long term. Ishigami's life is a complex existence. People define him based on a fight he got into during middle school, and because of the rumors that spread about it, he's ostracized as a stalker, a creep, a weirdo, and not a single person has bothered to clarify or ask him about what actually happened. To engage or empathize with him earnestly is to shatter the illusion of simplicity, because it's much easier to believe the rumors and cast him aside than actually get to know him. Ishigami's peers aren't interested in what the truth of his actions are, because it's simply easier to go with the flow and avoid disrupting the simple way they look at him. I don't think it's a stretch to say that people are generally averse to the idea of challenging their own beliefs, especially if confrontation and discomfort are involved in doing so. Some people argue at the start of the story that he is somewhat incel-coded. This assertion is kind of baseless because none of the ideas belonging to that ideology are present in his belief system. It's sufficient to say that Ishigami speaks in a very casually misogynistic way at the start of the manga, but I must remind you that Shiragane does too because they're both inexperienced high school boys trying to make sense of the world. The shallow way that the boys understand romance and what women do, what women want and all of that is plainly criticized by how ridiculous the gags are. Even Kaguya has completely archaic and weird views about a lot of the things, and the comedy makes you laugh about how silly it is to think those things. When Shiragane asks Ishigami for romantic advice, he says that he doesn't know much about romance and that his knowledge is mostly from reading rom-coms, which is very meta. But he starts going on a tirade about how she has no morals and girls are like this and that. And while it's jarring, yeah, when Shiragane gets him to focus on the task at hand, Ishigami just tells him to wait till things cool down to smooth things over which is actually helpful for the president. The person that speaks confidently about social dynamics and relationships as if he knows anything about them, and the calm and practical advice that he gives to Shiragane are both facets of who he is as a person. When he's trying to talk without experience, he's not trying to bamboozle Shiragane. He's trying to be dependable in other ways that aren't computers or finance related. He sees the president as his friend and he wants to be there for him. That's why he can cut the crap and be there to support him. Ishigami is inexperienced, socially isolated, and honestly he has no female friends at this part in the story. He's really good at walking into landmines because he doesn't really read social cues all too well. Sometimes his observations have truth, but they shouldn't be spoken aloud. This makes it especially easy for him to upset Kaguya and Fujiwara, and his fumbles are played off comedically. Ishigami leans into coming off as this weird introverted guy because it's much easier than proving every person wrong. It's much easier to let their misconceptions lie because it's exceptionally hard to change anyone's perception of you. And hell, maybe if he tried to do it very directly, people might just think he's being creepy and weird again. So he's kind of trapped in that paradigm. If he really didn't care about coming off as weird or creepy, it wouldn't make him feel so miserable when he realizes something he said was unintentionally inappropriate, even if it's generally played off as a joke at his expense. While he's not going to kneel and grovel with tears in his eyes and say I'm sorry women to Kage and Chika for making them uncomfortable all the time, he does change as the story goes on. The important part of any story is making the characters reflect and improve upon their actions in ways that are consistent with their narrative setting and its rule set. It would be kind of weird to just have a chapter where Ishigami comes to these realizations with no context, no experience, or prompt to move his development forward. To that end, numerous school events start to shove him out of his isolation because he catches glimpses of a world out there that he once deemed unbefitting of him. There's no need for you Ishigami to be known as a creep, a stalker, or an awkward introvert. And the story takes pains to show you that. But to overcome the simple picture of the world Ishigami uses to navigate his everyday life, we have to talk about how he constructs himself with relation to the world around him. The disparity between how we see ourselves and how others see us is a dynamic that none of us can really escape. While we may think we can be characterized as one thing, people external to us may see something completely different to how we make sense of ourselves. Sometimes the only way we can get closer to reconciling those two perspectives is to learn and grow with the help of our friends around us. Ishigami is shown to have a fringe that covers his hair, which is explained as a physical barrier between himself and the things he doesn't want to see in front of him. It's kind of silly because of how simple that is, but I appreciate it nonetheless. Many chapters show Ishigami absorbed in whatever he's doing as opposed to being very talkative. We see him playing games like Mario Kart, Ring Fit Adventure, and Apex Legends. Online, nobody can really figure out who Ishigami is, so they don't harbor preconceptions about how to treat him. In reality, he's branded by his sins and because of that, he doesn't have any friends outside of the president. Why care what a bunch of other people think about you when you can drown it out with media that placates you from the pain of being a pariah in your school? 
Ishigami Yu's greatest flaw is that he notices a lot of details about people. He sees their emotions and predicts how his actions will affect them without ever acting on them. He tries to calculate the possibilities and their consequences in his head before doing anything. This is a common logical fallacy because he assumes he knows how they'll respond because he's able to glean some understanding of their feelings, pushing him to talk himself out of ever doing anything that steps outside of his comfort zone and fear of rejection. Ishigami notices a lot of things, but he pretends not to see them, forcing himself to never act on those observations. When Ishigami finds out he's failing his classes, Kaguya helps him to study to avoid flunking out of school. She knows that his bad grades are primarily due to a lack of fundamentals due to an extended absence from middle school as opposed to being lazy. He had no reason to maintain those grades because he had no intention to return to school, so his drive to maintain those things for his own sake were basically non-existent. While studying together in study hall, girls begin gossiping about Ishigami and he worries about how that's going to affect Kaguya. He muses that he doesn't care if he gets held back. Ishigami has no self-preservation instincts, and he consciously punishes himself because of how diminished his self-worth and confidence in himself has become. Kaguya confronts the girls gossiping, and Ishigami worries that it will make more rumors spread. But she doesn't care what they say about her, she just wants him to succeed. This is the first time outside of President Shiragane that someone's actually showed genuine concern for him in the story, but it is far from the last. During the student council election arc, Ishigami expresses that he wants to beat Ino Miko by a landslide because they're on bad terms and seem to have some history together. This changes when he sees the audience laughing at her for having stage fright. Ishigami despises people who would laugh at somebody else who was trying their best, putting their passion into something, only to be met with ridicule. He puts aside his personal feud with Ino to motivate Shiragani to help salvage her speech, which demonstrates his empathy for other people. The courage Ino uses to overcome her stage fright is the kind of courage he wants to use to overcome his own fear of social rejection. This pushes him to make himself uncomfortable so he can grow through his discomfort. Ishigami always thought the cheer team was stupid, looking down on their enthusiasm and never bothering to learn the kind of passion it takes to join such a club. So, he challenged himself to change, by learning what it means to be a normie beyond his dismissive construction of them in his mind. He joins the cheer club on a whim, driven to understand how simple things make people so happy, and at first he thinks everything is kind of pointless. They use nonsensical slang and there's this condescension around finding joy in silly and whimsical things. And it's not like they're stupid slackers who don't care about their academics, because all of them are top cut students who score well on exams. Ishigami's introspection is a mix of, I don't get why they're like this, and I can't find a way to join the discussion. Despite everything, he still realizes he feels left out because he doesn't understand their perspective. While everyone is exchanging line IDs, he doesn't have one so he can't join in with everyone or participate properly in club activities. That is, until his senpai calls him by his name and notices he doesn't use line, so she exchanges emails with him to make sure he knows when club meetups are happening. Every single character besides his classmate has no facial details because he can't face anyone except the student council. He can't look at them for who they are because that would mean they notice him. And then they'd try to get to know him, and if they know his past, they might reject him, feeding into his biggest trauma. The club decides to do a uniform swap between the guys and the girls, but Ishigami doesn't have anyone he can ask for their uniform because a lot of the girls think he's creepy already. He can only ask Kaguya. She offers her uniform to Ishigami and is puzzled as to why she trusts him with it, and she tells him that her apprehension is far less relevant than the fact that her junior needs help. Kaguya plays a prank on him and does some funny makeup, but all in all you can tell that she's growing closer to Ishigami as his friend, not just a concerned senpai. The email Ishigami gets from the vice captain of the cheer club reveals that her name is Tsubame Koyasu, hinting at a future friendship in Ishigami's future. Osoragi Kobachi is Ino Miko's best friend and a fellow member of the public morals committee. She knows the reason that Ishigami Yu is branded in high school society. All the first year girls despise Ishigami, but there's two main reasons they do. Firstly, there's information that deems him problematic, which makes it righteous to ostracize him if they're doing it for the right reasons, even if they have no stake in the matter. Secondly, a victim exists to justify their actions, since everything they do is on behalf of somebody else, even if it serves functionally no purpose. The rumor surrounding Ishigami Yu is that he beat a girl's boyfriend to a pulp in a fit of jealous rage. He was indefinitely suspended as a result, and the girl transferred schools because of the ordeal. Osoragi doesn't buy the rumors, and thinks that he's awkward but he's very logically driven. She knows that nobody asked him his side of the story, so his alleged sins have become canon. Everyone that knows the rumors detests him, even his fellow cheer club member Onodera Rei. Osoragi tells the cheer club captain and Koyasu to take care of Ishigami, because he's not there to screw around. 
and they enthusiastically oblige her request. Kobachi is shown smiling at a sweat-drenched Ishigami who is working hard to change his future, regardless of what his past holds. As Ishigami is enjoying himself at the school sports festival with the student council and his cheer club, he spots the one person he never wanted to see, his victim, Otomo Kyoko, who says that he seems to be enjoying himself. Kyoko is a symbol of his greatest regret, his biggest failing in life, and seeing her triggers those memories, causing Ishigami to spiral. The captain of the cheer club sprains his ankle, so Ishigami is brought in as his replacement for the inter-club relay, representing the pride of the cheer club. Ishigami says that he can't do it, but the cheer captain says that he knows about his middle school days, which makes Ishigami's stomach sink. But he doesn't know about his infamy, but instead his athleticism and how he was the fastest runner on the track. This is the third time someone has firmly believed in Ishigami, and the entire club supports his faith in Ishigami. For once, his middle school reputation was defined by his skill in running, as opposed to his stained reputation as a stalker. Vice Captain Koyasu pushes him forward, and the cheer club captain cheers him on. Ishigami is carrying the hopes of a club that genuinely believes in him, one that has seen his hard work. Shirogane points out that he's carrying a big responsibility as the cheer club rep, but assures him that he's a skilled runner, so he'll be fine. Kage gives them both best wishes for the relay. They notice that he looks kind of pale. As the crowd sees that Ishigami is going to be running in the relay, they start to express their disappointment, and Ishigami begins remembering where it all went wrong. Ishigami and Kyoko were classmates, and she was kind to him. She struck up conversations with him, and she was a really selfless person. He appreciated that she talked to him despite him being a loner, and he felt that he would do anything to protect her smile. Her boyfriend, Ogino Ko, was the president of the drama club and he was popular, standing as Ishigami's polar opposite. Despite his disdain for couple's happiness, Ishigami actually wanted the two of them to be happy, and he wasn't really driven by jealousy. He doesn't remember why, but at this time he recalls being obsessed with a sense of justice. Ogino Ko was cheating on Kyoko with another girl and Ishigami confronted him over it. He didn't want him to confess his sins or anything, he just wanted Ko to stop cheating on Kyoko. Ko offers Ishigami nudes of Kyoko in exchange for Ishigami's silence. This drove such a deep feeling of disgust in him that he blacked out and beat Ko to a pulp. Ko played the victim and acted like he was being assaulted, pleading helplessly, but as he leaned in, he warned Ishigami that if he didn't stop, he would post revenge porn of her all over the internet to hurt her. This is where his drama experience kicked in, and he framed Ishigami as a jealous stalker, and that this was all the product of romantic tensions and jealousy, he won over the crowd. Everyone turned against Ishigami. Even Kyoko, his only friend. Ishigami thinks this is crazy, but Kyoko tells him that he's the one that's crazy. Which is when he begins bearing this cross, unable to clear his name, as anything but a violent and jealous stalker. During his suspension, Ishigami realizes he kind of got baited into that situation by believing any of it was real. Ko was merely trying to escape the situation, so Ishigami beat him to a pulp for no reason. Ishigami realized that he didn't have to do this, and his pursuit of justice was hollow and naive. He could have talked to Kyoko about it, but he ended up escalating things before he knew it. Thus, he began his cycle of self-deprecation, telling himself he's cringy, creepy, and he acted crazy, and if he didn't do anything, he wouldn't have to suffer for what he did. He didn't write that letter, and he failed to return to his studies. His parents were ashamed of him, and their relationship became strained. His guidance counselor even hated him, and his locker was used as a trash can. He became miserable, and despite knowing these things, he couldn't apologize. To protect Kyoko, he never once told people what happened. And even if he was wrong for beating Ko, people would feel far less sympathetic to the stalker story as a ploy to ruin Ishigami. Since adultery is a crime in Japan, people can have fines or prison sentences for cheating on their spouses. As such, the cultural attitude towards it is much more severe. Even with celebrities who cheat, they end up losing their jobs and they get non-stop death threats. Ishigami refused to let Ko win, so he would not apologize. It was a sense of pride he refused to abandon, so he never returned to middle school. The student council of Shuchin Academy saw Ishigami's enrollment application and investigated his case to learn the truth of what happened between Ishigami Yu, Ogino Ko, and Otomo Kyoko. After learning the burden that he carried, Shirogane recruited Ishigami to the student council, telling him that Kyoko is doing just fine, and Ogino Ko was laying low as he feared for his own safety. Shirogane isn't interested in who was right in the situation, and he says that Ishigami could have handled it better, but he achieved his goal of protecting Kyoko's smile. He tells Ishigami that the reflection that Ishigami should have written to respond to his suspension is simply, shut up stupid. Shirogane tells him he's not crazy and pats him on the head, and Ishigami told himself that as long as there's one person who understands his situation, 
then he doesn't care what everyone else thinks. Before he starts the relay, Kyoko tells him that she hopes he trips and falls on his face, that she got dumped and she has a grudge against him. And you know what that guy, the goat of this story says? Shut up, stupid. Following the advice of President Shirigane. By facing the trauma of his past, regardless of whether Kyoko knows what motivated the fight or not, Ishigami is able to break free from his chains because he's finally faced the past and able to accept the choice he made regardless of his regrets. The student council was in his corner, and the cheer club was counting on him. He finally had the chance to make things right. If he can just win this race, then he can redefine his legacy. Ishigami Yu lost the race. Because he didn't win, he started to beat himself up again. But that's when Koyasu started crying and calling his name, telling him how close it was. And when the cheer club saw him being sad, they all felt sad. Captain Kazuno complimented his effort, and even Onodera, who hates his guts, told him to shrug it off. The other clubs had a lead before he got to run, so it wasn't his fault. Kuyasu asks him if he's okay, and for the first time, in so damn long, Ishigami Yu is able to look people straight in the face, and accept the love and support of the people around him. He can make out their faces, their eyes, their hair, and looks at them with faith in himself. His entire mindset around himself, how others see him, and whether he deserved to be punished for the mistake all shifted. He believed that his cheer club, the people surrounding him, were good people. These normies he loved to trash, they were perfectly kind. And though he didn't get the slang and all that, he loved the energy and really let himself enjoy those youthful moments he felt deeply insecure about in the past. Ishigami was setting in motion his own growth and change because he was starting to see a life that he never felt he deserved. One that he never had the courage to step towards. One that he talked himself out of because of how small his self-image had become. Kyoko doesn't learn the truth, but Ishigami fought to protect her smile. I don't think Ishigami's actions are just, but he knew that too. I understand that if some guy you're nice to beat the shit out of your boyfriend, you probably wouldn't ask what both sides are because to anyone, there wouldn't be a reasonable response. So I don't like reading people say that she's stupid for that reason, or that she doesn't appreciate what he did, because that's disrespecting Ishigami's character arc. He specifically wanted to prevent her harm, and while he managed it in the most violent way possible and suffered immensely for it, he did accomplish his goal and protected her smile. Funnily enough, Kaguya got Oginoko transferred out of the school after the board of VIPs turned against him. The sports festival ends without a hitch, and Ishigami celebrates the red team's victory in the final event, standing alongside his club, whose happy faces he can actually see now. The fringe that usually covers one of his eyes was able to be moved away, so that he can enjoy the kindness and company of people around him. As Ishigami develops a willingness to open himself up and be perceived and known by the people around him, our boy moves from a withdrawn and extremely self-deprecating person to a more well-rounded guy who's actually putting in a genuine effort to learn about others and challenges preconceived notions about the world and the way things go. There's a tendency to think that when you have good analytical skills that you know how things will go. Oftentimes, the only way to know how people will respond and react to you is to go through with the things you want to do. Just be honest and open and communicate with them clearly. Yeah, you will fail, get rejected and take L's in your life, but that's better than never trying and convincing yourself that you will always fail. Ishigami had spent the last stretch of his life living inside his head, calculating and predicting how things might play out. And he was too scared to venture outside his comfort zone because he often took mental damage by hearing that he's coming across as creepy and weird. Ishigami was too afraid to be rejected, too afraid to live, but with the support of those around him combined with his dedication to changing, he was able to begin unraveling his trauma and start looking at the world and the people in it clearly. He's not magically improved from that one happy moment, but he's beginning to build his life into something that he will appreciate and remember for all it has to offer, whether he gets hurt in the future or not. It's not that he'll never suffer again, it's that he knows that moments like these can be his lighthouse in the darkness of a world that can at times be needlessly cruel to you. Now, he has the courage to try and see the world without his bangs obscuring the people around him. Ishigami's growth during the sports festival was incredibly cathartic and enjoyable for fans of the series to watch. His quirks and personality traits were interrogated for their foundations as opposed to saying, haha, isn't this funny the 30th time you've heard it? The one thing that never changes as you move through life is that you'll always need to work on something, and to think that we're done learning about ourselves and the world outside is just hubris on our part. Ishigami's coming out of his shell, but a single good memory is not enough to uproot his insecurities and the trauma he has endured. Ishigami's outward disdain for couples hasn't shifted because his inferiority complex still plagues his everyday life. 
Kaguya figures out pretty quickly that he's interested in Tsubame Koyasu, who is the vice captain of the cheer club. She figured out his crush because of how flustered he got while Koyasu was talking to him. When Kaguya jokes that it's good that he's not into her because she's out of his league, the underlying issue is laid bare. Ishigami doesn't feel good enough for her, or for anyone really. His lifetime has been an amalgamation of failures, and making himself vulnerable to rejection in romance is not something he's willing to go through if he thinks it's not probable that he'll succeed. Ishigami's inferiority complex resurfaces because he's never had any success with girls, and the one girl he was close to in the past he screwed up with massively and he felt an immense level of social rejection that most people couldn't even fathom. Kaguya knows he hasn't had much success in life, but she tells Ishigami he needs to make Koyasu his. She challenges his fear of rejection outright and points out that he can't let this go unrequited because it will stay that way forever. To that end, he needs to have courage. Ishigami's big plan to win over Kuyasu is this juvenile idea that something ultra-romantic is required to make someone fall for you. Every single plan he thinks up sounds either creepy or weird to Kaguya, so she tells him to work on his more fundamental traits to make himself more attractive. It's true, there are superficial ways to make yourself more attractive, having good hygiene, taking care of your hair and appearance generally do make you look more presentable. But while those things are nice, they usually aren't the sole determinant for attraction. Unless you have a bowl cut, then it's time you get a new hairdresser. Kaguya isn't as fascinated by aesthetic. She wants his efforts to shine through since the president's hardworking ethic makes him more attractive to her. Ishigami grinds away, studying his butt off. Not because he wanted to impress his crush, but because someone still believed he could excel and do great in his exams. He was doing it because Kaguya Shinomiya still believed in him. A motivation so powerful that he put aside his games, knuckled down, and studied. When the test scores released, he didn't break top 50. He ranked around 150th. His frustration was palpable, and he sat there stewing with a mixture of self-loathing, anger, and disappointment. He wanted to do better, and pledged to Kaguya that he would do anything to become better. Through the bitter taste of defeat, our secondary protagonist did not wallow in self-deprecation, nor did he say he was going home to die. He resolved to work hard to change. There's a legend at the academy that there was once a princess on the verge of death from an incurable sickness. To be healed, she must throw a young man's heart into the flames and drink the ashes mixed into soup. Eventually, a man who loved the princess appeared and offered his heart, saving her life. This created the legend that the gift of a heart during the devoted heart festival would lead to eternal love. Romanticism pervades a lot of our adolescence. We have idealistic views about ourselves, the world, and how some things should go. Of course, not everyone has their head in the clouds, but there's a natural spark and whimsy that we as teenagers had, which made even the most inane things seem more interesting. Romance involves strategy, not just vibes. You had to pick the right place and the right time to do anything, but reality is not always so convenient. When Ishigami learns that Tsubame is not dating the captain of the cheer club, he starts thinking that his odds of success are way higher now. Even Kaguya endorses this belief, despite how unfounded it is. Ishigami says it's shallow to think that this was his chance, but it shocks Kaguya who actually did believe that. He doesn't want to confess just based on calculations, but he feels the pressure of Koyasu graduating as his time limit. He's counting the days until she graduates, so he wants to become someone special to her. His internal struggle is that he's afraid of being rejected, but not knowing what could have been is a possibility that's both realistic and far more painful. Kaguya pushes him to have courage, not really knowing whether he'll succeed or not. She felt her own inadequacy, and pushed him not to be afraid as she had been all this time. He spends a lot of time thinking about how to ask Koyasu to see the festival with him, and he settles on inviting her to his class event, which is a haunted house. He tells her he asked her because she likes scary things, and her face lights up and they go off to see the haunted house event. They don't end up experiencing it together because it's separated by gender for whatever reason, but it prompts Koyasu to invite him to her class event, and they had a bunch of games showing that she also had his interests in mind when inviting him. She wasn't just doing it to return the favor. Ishigami ends up winning the heart-shaped cookie, and he ends up giving it to his senpai, but he doesn't understand the implication. He doesn't understand that he's offering her eternal love, and he thought she just wanted the cookie. So everyone is just standing around staring in awe, and when she asks what he means, he says that this is a token of his feelings, which is even more hectic for Koyasu as she's really not sure, and she asks for time to think it over. A lot of people saw Ishigami's confession, including Fujiwara and Shiragani, who happened to be passing by. Unfortunately for Ishigami, Koyasu starts avoiding him without really explaining why. Anytime he tries to get her attention, she just runs off without explaining. 
Koyasu tells Kaguya that she doesn't have any feelings for Ishigami, and there's nothing particularly wrong with him, but she generally rejects people who ask her out because they're often pretty shallow. She's unsure whether to reject him because she doesn't want to ruin their friendship. It's not easy for her either, because she doesn't want to hurt him, but she also doesn't want to date him. She explains that she doesn't want to fall in love with him, and that she'd probably only think about him, and that her university is kind of far away from where he'd be. But those aren't her defining reasons. It's an amalgamation of a bunch of tiny reasons. Kaguya is in disbelief that Ishigami even asked her out, but then she realized that she pushed him to do it, and now she's accidentally told Koyasu to be blunt and reject him. Kaguya isn't coercing Koyasu into one answer or the other, at least not intentionally. This is one of the few times that her advice and beliefs about the world have actually pushed someone to do something for better or worse. Koyasu and Kaguya see Ishigami prevent some weirdos from tricking Ino into hanging out with them, making Koyasu realize that she doesn't really know Ishigami that well. She resolves to wait and see how her feelings develop over time, and puts off rejecting him. After avoiding him for a while, Koyasu meets up with Ishigami, and says that she doesn't understand him, but she'd like to try and learn about him. Regardless of the outcome, Ishigami has yet another person trying to understand the bare truth of who he is. She finds it very endearing that he's passionate about flowers and listens to him talk about cherry blossom trees. And while Ishigami's embarrassed, his passion makes her smile. She still doesn't really know how she feels. She doesn't know when or if she'll ever know, and she asks him to give her a time limit, so she has to make a decision at some point. At this point, Ishigami doesn't even know he's offered her his heart. He thought he was just being thoughtful by giving her the cookie. And this was a critical time to not be able to read romantic cues and gestures, but alas. He gave her March as a deadline, but he thinks they're just gonna go see cherry blossoms together. While watching Koyasu's performance, he realized that he admitted he liked her through the gesture, but he's not fully aware that it's functionally a confession to every single person except him. While Shiragane and Kaguya are off doing their ultra-romantic thing, Ishigami is still unaware he confessed. Funnily enough, he gives a heart-shaped charm to Ino Miko, and he shows her the bonfire that she worked hard to organize during the festival planning, and how it was a great success, because she couldn't see it for herself. After the festival ends, Yu gets invited to hang out with Koyasu on Christmas Eve, and if you're not aware, that's like a couple's day in Japan, so it's a pretty big deal to be asked that. However, she meant that she was having a Christmas party, so Ishigami was immediately taken back to reality. At her Christmas party, Koyasu is very upbeat, and she's speaking in slang that Ishigami can't even understand. But she's having fun, and he's kind of dripped out, I won't lie. Ishigami decides to buy her a floral aroma diffuser, which Kaguya helped him choose since it best represents his personality and his feelings. After Ina gets drunk off some alcoholic chocolates, Ishigami takes care of her as she's passed out. Koyasu appreciates how kind he is for doing that, despite how they're constantly fighting otherwise. Ishigami can't make the last train while Ino is drunk, so he's left with no choice but to stay in the guest house at Koyasu's place. While he's getting ready to sleep as he's no longer thinking about whether he might end up doing something with Koyasu, she comes into the room and starts flirting with him, and one thing leads to another and they're about to have sex, but... Ishigami is firmly against acting out of his self-interest. He's not interested in a hookup or a fling. He says that he likes her, and he wants her to go out with him, and she handily rejects him. For all the reasons she told Kaguya. Ishigami Yu, once again, felt rejection. But for the first time, it was from someone he had confessed his feelings for. He asks her why she wanted to sleep with him if she didn't like him, and she just wanted to thank him for liking her. She still does know what love is, and she's unsure how she feels about him at all. And because Ishigami is a virgin, he's not comfortable with her proposition because of his ideals around sex and romance. Neither party really understands what they want out of both of those things, and it hurts them both tremendously in this moment. Koyasu begs Ishigami to stay, but he's just torn. He doesn't know how to feel anymore, and even though she has a present for him, he still insists on leaving with Ino to take her home, before tripping down some stairs. Ishigami isn't attempting to end his life here, it's more that he feels miserable about things so he doesn't really act as observant as he usually is. He got rejected romantically for the first time, and he didn't lash out, he didn't make her feel bad about it, he just didn't know what to do with his heartache. He's 15 years old and he can't really manage his feelings that well. So he's completely wide-eyed when he realized that he slipped in a notch on the stairs and he might actually fall to his death. Instead, Miko Ino broke his fall, breaking her arm in the process. You can feel however you want about Ishigami's beliefs about sex, but the author isn't making a point about casual sex or anything like that. Ishigami is a virgin, and he wasn't comfortable in the situation, so it's his right to turn her down and get out of there. He didn't want pity to be a factor either, so he opted not to go along with it since he probably thought it was a little bit coercive if she was just doing that to answer his feelings without dating him. 
The two of them talk about their uncomfortable feelings after Christmas, but Ishigami resolves that he will become a person that Kuyasu can fall in love with. Kuyasu tries to ask a fortune teller what the point of a confession is, and finds that she hasn't had much luck in love, and Shiragani's dad tells her that eternal love may not exist, but real love might exist out there. He explains the concept of chasing the confession, the thought of dating the person you love, playing silly games and risking rejection and maybe even trying to confess herself. But she'll never make it to real love unless she makes it to the starting line, which comes with taking a chance on it. He tells her that there's no such thing as fate in this world, and that fate and destiny are not a crutch you should rely on. What's in your head is what matters. Using your brain is good. Unless you overthink, then you'll probably never make it, because you're too scared to fail. Everyone has different advice for Ishigami to improve himself. Hiragani tells him that maybe he should get her to confess instead of confessing, since he's worried about ruining things and making it awkward. The cheer club captain, Kazuno, recommends he builds muscle to impress her since she's one of the impossible girls of the school. Kaguya supports Ishigami as he works really hard to become a man that's good enough for Koyasu. Something interesting that happens is that Onodera Rei and Ishigami Yu are friendly with each other in one of the chapters. The narration indicates that she's been doing introspection and probably realized that she didn't need to hold anything against him, regardless of what happened in the past. Ishigami trains both his muscles and volleyball skills diligently, and Koyasu promises that if his team wins the match, she'll go on a date with him. His team wins. As Ishigami consults Kaguya for date ideas, she proceeds to shoot down every corny or elaborate plan he has, just in case it comes off as creepy or weird. The key focus for Ishigami is to not try too hard. He's already inexperienced with romance, but he tends to lean into extravagance because those kinds of tropes are prevalent in fiction. Having no experience in it himself, he needs people to tell him when his ideas are a bit too outlandish and intense. At Hayasaka's recommendation, he settles on going on a date to Yokohama. When Ishigami enrolled, Kaguya was the one that brought Ishigami's case to the student council's attention, and it was actually Fujiwara Chika that was adamant they should clear his name. President Shiragane wondered if it was necessary for him to sacrifice his dignity and reputation for Kyoko's sake, but he understood Ishigami's pride and his decision. Before Ishigami can go on his date, Osaragi Kobachi takes it upon herself to clear his name. Koyasu was constantly told that Ishigami was a weirdo, a stalker, but she never paid those rumors any mind. But Kobachi needed her to know the truth. Subama Koyasu does like Ishigami, but she doesn't know what kind of like it is. Whether he's a friend or a romantic partner, she's still not sure about it, even after going on a date and even after getting to know him more and more. She doesn't take it lightly because it affects her future. She doesn't know about its longevity or even how to make heads or tails of her own feelings. After getting advice from Shiragani's dad, who's now a live streamer and VTuber, he tells her to define her boundaries with him and try to understand what kind of relationship she wants to have with him. This leads her to contacting Otomo Kyoko, so she can tell her the truth about what actually happened with Ogino Ko and Ishigami Yu. Ishigami Yu had always lived his life with an inferiority complex, even before the incident with Kyoko. He was a loner without many friends, and his lack of personal success exacerbated that insecurity. Having pushed himself to study and score well, join a club, and socialize with new people outside of the student council, Ishigami was coming out of his shell and starting to earnestly try and make the most of his youth. He always resented that others were able to reach this kind of happiness. But as he pushed through his discomfort, he was able to force himself to grow and change so that he could feel those things for himself. In Japan, Valentine's Day is the day that women give chocolates to men, and then men return the favor on the 14th of March on White Day. On Valentine's Day? The first person to give Ishigami chocolates is Tsubame Koyasu. The second person is Onodera Rei, followed by Osoragi Kobachi and Fujiwara Chika, and finally, Ino Miko. Before Tsubame graduated, Ishigami Yu, with all the support of his friends in the student council, strived to change. He committed himself to stop making excuses and to stop speaking badly of himself. Kaguya tells him that people excel at different things, but that doesn't mean he'll never be good at those things. With the support of his peers, anything was possible. Surrounded by his friends, he was able to spend every waking moment studying in ways that were conducive to his strengths. And so, our secondary protagonist Ishigami Yu jumped from 150th all the way to 36th in his year. Kaguya Shinomiya cried from how proud she was of him. And Tsubame Koyasu is impressed by his efforts too and asks if he's interested in university entrance exams or something. Ishigami tells Koyasu that he wanted to become someone good enough for her. A fallacious belief that a lot of guys carry is that they were never good enough for somebody if they get rejected. If only they were born taller, if only their physique was more muscular, if only they took more care of their appearance. This deep insecurity that you aren't enough for someone can be pretty brutal on the psyche. 
and Ishigami has lived that his entire life, not just in romance, but even as a person who could be someone's friend. In the last year, he's struggled hard to change himself, becoming more physically fit, becoming more studious, engaging with social clubs, becoming more emotionally intelligent and expressive while learning his weaknesses in expressing himself. Beyond the superficial, a lot of that stuff really doesn't matter. People don't always have a rigid explanation for why they like somebody they do, and trying to justify it using the superficial elements is pretty funny to me. Like yeah, in time you'll be able to say, oh this happened on this picnic, or the way they look during this movie, blah blah, like yeah, you can give reasons to ground things in reality. But attraction as a concept is difficult to define, and a lot of people try to explain it as a science, but those people just want to make money from you. There is no exhaustive explanation for what attraction is. Even though Ishigami spends so much time on personal development, that doesn't mean that he's magically going to get Tsubame to realize her feelings and fall in love with him. Tsubame Koyasu does not like Ishigami Yu romantically. Her hesitation, her exploration of herself and her own feelings wasn't a ploy to lead him on or anything. She just genuinely didn't know what it meant to fully like or love someone, which frustrates the people around her. Koyasu realizes how difficult the situation became when she tried to sleep with him out of a sense of duty or her own manifestation of kindness. But Ishigami's not a creep, he's not the type of person who's going to take advantage of someone's mood and situation to act in his self-interest. Because Koyasu had unclear and mixed feelings about him, sleeping with him is kind of an act to placate him, and I'm not judging her decision there, it's her body and her choice to make. But Ishigami obviously wasn't comfortable with the dynamic at play, and because Ishigami doesn't feel like he's her equal, it feels even worse in that situation. Shuchin Academy is populated by the elite of Japanese society. Because of that, people who carry such a stain on their name like Ishigami Yu cannot participate in everyday school life. They can't be anything but their lowest point, because such an associate could create such problems for their parents, let alone their own reputations. And who would really stick their neck out for an alleged violent stalker? Well, the cheer club. Even Onodera Rei, who believed the rumors, gradually put it aside. The student council have always had his back in this regard, even Fujiwara, who Ishigami constantly bickers with. Branded as the stalker that traumatized Otomo Kyoko, Ishigami holds his tongue because shifting the narrative would bring harm to a person he doesn't want to suffer. Since Kobachi told Koyasu what actually happened at that time by giving her the dossier, Koyasu becomes incensed, and she feels driven to clear Ishigami's name. Tsubame Koyasu can't change how she feels about him as a romantic partner, but as a popular student tied to the VIPs of the academy, she has the reach to clear his name. The VIPs decide to start their own rumor, to drown out the rumor that Ishigami is a stalker. They want to spin the narrative in a way that protects Kyoko so she doesn't get any backlash. To that end, they say that Ishigami knew that Ko was cheating on Kyoko. And to prevent Ishigami from speaking up, Ogino spread rumors about him. This protects the dignity of both Kyoko and Ishigami. The VIPs expect that people are going to leak the plan, but they actually count on this because the discrepancies between rumors out there about Ishigami will lead them to ask questions. Not everyone will care what the truth is, but those that do will stand in Ishigami's corner instead of dismissing his very existence before even knowing him. To solidify the plan, Kaguya attaches a picture of Ogino cheating, which nobody knows how she got. Koyasu's plan to clear his name goes off without a hitch, and before he knows it, all the first years are staring at him, but this time without a look of disgust in their eyes. Now, it's time for the third years to graduate. This was Koyasu's parting gift for Ishigami Yu. To clear his name so that people might know the kind boy that they pushed to the side without knowing a single thing about him. Cheer Captain Kazuno jokes for a bit with Ishigami about how he's graduating and he could offer him his button which is apparently a thing that girls ask for. But his tone shifts and he gets serious. He apologizes that he couldn't have done more for Ishigami. He regretted that he didn't do anything sooner as his senior. Ishigami rejects everything he says, telling Kazuno that everything he's done for him means a lot to him and he doesn't want him to talk badly of himself like that. I really love these parting words. Because the most self-deprecating character doesn't want to see others hurt or feel sad. And through his own growth, he's come a long way from constantly saying that he wants to die and shutting himself away from the world. In large part due to the cheer club that Kazuno led, he sees Kazuno off and Kazuno tells him they should catch up in the future. As Ishigami cries, he reflects on how honest he is with his feelings. He never thought he'd cry over a graduation and his younger self would laugh at him for this. Tsubame Koyasu waited for Ishigami under the cherry blossom tree which they promised to meet at in March. Koyasu had always been aware of the rumors about Ishigami, but she enjoyed the way that he was strangely funny and went out of her way to greet him whenever she could. Until one day, he found the courage to do the same. It made her extremely happy when he said good morning to her for the first time, and she enjoyed seeing him socialize with other club members even after the festival ended. 
She never thought that their personalities would match up, so when he confessed, she was surprised. Koyasu never knew what to do in romance, so she started to act differently, but when Ishigami started acting naturally, she reminded herself how to enjoy herself again. Her love for Ishigami is platonic, and though she loves the person Yu is, she doesn't love him as a partner. Once more, Ishigami admits his feelings to Tsubame Koyasu. He loves her, and asks her to go out with him. With tears in her eyes, she rejects him. He starts elaborating on how he feels, but she still knows she doesn't feel the same way. She feels guilt, and doesn't want to hurt him, and she even considered dating him just to make it easier, but she knew that was dishonest to her own feelings. Koyasu is considered an impossible girl because she rejects just about everyone that meets her. Her biggest fear is that Ishigami will walk out of her life after she rejects him, and she cleared his name to show that she genuinely cared about him as a person. She was not merely being nice to the lonely introvert with no friends. She saw him, with her own two eyes. She just didn't fall in love with him. Ishigami believes that they can still stay friends, and the two of them pledge to work hard, and make a friendship work, where the awkwardness of rejection is just a funny story in the past, as opposed to a stain that makes things unsalvageable. As a reflection of his feelings, Ishigami hands her the flowers he chose, and he sends off Tsubame Koyasu as she leaves Shuchin Academy. Ishigami doesn't cry, not until she leaves. He says, so this is what heartbreak feels like. I've made fun of so many guys for crying over being rejected before, but damn, it really hurts. Ishigami's rejection was the most important lesson for him yet. He learned that love is not a function of checking all the right boxes. It's not a measure of personal development, nor something that pure strategy can ensure. He really tried to better himself for Koyasu, but no one should do that for someone they like. They should do it for themselves. You can test well, be more athletic, be kind and do any number of feats, but those things won't shift the feelings in a person's heart. The thing that he needed most was to be able to love himself and feel proud of himself. He needed to better himself for himself. Ishigami is in shambles after his rejection, but who wouldn't be? It's pretty normal to be like, damn, this is an unbearable pain in my chest, in my stomach even. I don't think it was a waste of time, and Ishigami started scoring well, making new friends and overall he was able to become a normie without even realizing it. He had friends that he saw outside of school, he became popular with girls since Kobachi and Ino clearly have feelings for him, and every bit of personal development he underwent shaped him into somebody that's closer to his ideal self. His inferiority complex be damned, he was resilient through his failures, through how uncomfortable it would be to change and he still did it. Everyone surrounding him knows that Ishigami was simply not Koyasu's type, but with everything in mind, Koyasu doesn't really know what her preferred type is, but she knew she couldn't love him as his girlfriend. It's much easier to say that you'll be good enough for someone so that they start finding you attractive, than for their actual feelings to change. People are complicated things. This is true for Ishigami and Koyasu. Previously, Ishigami only knew about romance from fiction, but now he knows that sometimes pursuing love means getting hurt. But the courage to try despite that is what makes him the greatest of all time. I don't care if he's not successful in every facet of his life. Nobody should be laughed at for trying their hardest and doing their best. I was more happy to see Ishigami grow as a person than I was seeing him be rewarded for his personal development. Even though he's heartbroken and in shambles, throughout this arc, Ishigami was self-confident. He showed pride in his efforts and that is when I knew that he'd become one of my favorite characters in all of fiction. His changes weren't just unearned pieces of exposition that made you feel things. They were consistent with the character's introductions, his motivation, his desire to overcome his inferiority complex. Yeah, he didn't win because he lost in love, but he won in literally every other category of his life from his academics to his social life and even his ability to concisely convey his thoughts and emotions, something that past Ishigami was critically unable to do. And he does all of that while still remaining true to his interests like games and anime. He doesn't spend all that time becoming a fake version of himself so people like him more. He expands his own worldview so that he can get along with more people that have different interests to him. For that reason, it's easy for me to understand that Ishigami is the GOAT. By growing and changing throughout the story, I really cried a lot because of how proud I felt of Ishigami. Much like Kaguya, I saw his failure, I saw his ethic. I saw his commitment to become a more well-rounded person to defy the box that everyone shoved him into. He wasn't vengeful, and he didn't care to get back at the people who wronged him. He just kept his head down, worked incredibly hard and tried to overcome his inferiority complex. He learned how to connect with others, how to work hard and score well on exams. He reintegrated into the world he didn't think he deserved. And nothing feels more beautiful than that. 
The idea I see in Ishigami is simple. It's incredibly difficult to become the person that you can be proud of, especially when the world is cruel to you for seemingly no reason. While there are a lot more arcs I did not cover, I encourage you to read it, because the tensions between Ino Miko and Ishigami Yu are extremely elaborate and crafted with care. There's just so much character writing in the manga that I feel cathartic about, that I could never hope to cover it all. I know this video was on the longer side, but the manga is almost 300 chapters and I covered about 200 of them. So I want to hear your thoughts about how your perception of Ishigami changed as you read the manga or watched the anime. Because Ishigami Yu is one of my favorite characters of all time, and I really do mean that. I hope that even 1% of something I've said has done him justice, because yeah, he's just the GOAT. They say that thriving in the face of adversity is one of the best feelings. And Ishigami went from being completely crippled by fear, unable to socialize with others, to a person he could feel proud of. We're all proud of you, Ishigami, and I'm so glad that he was written with such care. I've been Meat Man, and this was probably the longest video I've ever made. <laughs> I know I said I wouldn't make any ones that were this long anymore, but I got in over my head. But that's okay. I had a lot of fun writing this, I had a lot of fun rereading this, and if I did a good job, if I did bad, anything, let me know in the comments below. I'll catch you in the next video in about two weeks. Until next time, see ya.